As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from a research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Again, I, I'm a fan of this move, so I don't have a lot to say on that. I would say, I would, I would guess though that it's probably a combination of the two. It's, it's not just, it, it, I don't think it's any one thing. I think it's probably, there's probably some more reasons there behind that as well. If, if that's the route you want to take. Much um, more diplomatic answer from Jimmy on that one. Classic. <laughs> classic. It depends. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's the lawyer and him coming out. <laughs> Wani says, uh, thanks. Um, Robert says, actually, I want to read this comment because it's perfect time to plug. Uh, Robert says, on the topic of reducing the gender gap in esports, it is interesting to see more beauty brands launching gaming focus, uh, I assume products, including Valkyrie's Reflect, made specifically for gamers regardless of gender. Will you all be trying it out for a future podcast and how could it be leveraged for inclusion? Um, great question, Robert. And, wow, um, Robert, been sitting in uh, on our meetings lately or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so two comments on this. One, uh, that is a news story from this week. We aren't going to touch on it, but I'll tell you why. And this is the second point. Um, call this the unofficial announcement because uh, we haven't officially announced it yet. But our own Lindsay the Boss Poss um, will soon, very soon, be hosting her very own, call it, um, spin out podcast focused exclusively on women in esports, the issues there, the news there, the people there, the stories there. Um, so, like all the kind of the great format of the business of esports and what we do, uh, but apply to Lindsay's area of expertise and and with great incredible women coming on the show and planned and so we're not ready to announce it officially yet but it is literally weeks away um or like literally any day now pretty much uh where you will see an announcement about that so um i'm teasing it here but uh robert if you're if you're looking for that kind of content we're gonna it's gonna be so much more of it sorry Lindsay, go ahead no, I just, I was going to encourage all of our listeners to give it a shot too. Um, we're starting with the focal point of women in gaming, but that doesn't mean that there's not lessons applicable to everyone. It's going to be a lot about um, mental health and mental fitness and well-being um, and dealing with toxicity, dealing with imposter syndrome, kind of, it, the goal is to build something that everyone can listen to and enjoy. Um, so certainly if you're interested in that kind of, in those kinds of issues, give it a listen, give it a shot and... Hopefully you'll love it. We, you'll see, like I said, the official announcements from us soon and uh, like a cool new brand and the whole bit. So um, thank you, Robert, for teeing that up yes. because uh, it is exciting. And uh, you're going to get, for fans of The Boss, um, you're going to get to see a lot more of Lindsay now without me or Jimmy or Jeff or any of us getting in the way, um, which I think is going to be good news for a lot of, a lot of Lindsay's fans. Um, Patrick says, all the Crypt, bro crypt Bros, is that, is that a thing? Crypt That's bros? great. That's great. I love that. <laughs> all the Crypt Bros are going to now jump to Epic. It's a great move because they stopped playing Fortnite when they turned 15. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, Greg says, Blanco's Block Party is a great blockchain game. Uh, Greg, it's, I'll be honest, I, I've heard of it, but I've never... I know, I know there are some very popular ones like that, and... And Wade says Axie Infinity, like another popular one. I just have not personally played them. Um, but I guess I should try. We should try them, Jimmy. Lindsay, right? We should, we should get on yeah, the block. I'll game. On, the epic, on the Epic right? Game Store. On the Epic <laughs> Game Store. Uh, Lindsay said she missed my comments. That means the world to me. Well, there you go, Wani. So you'll have to watch her show, Wani, because then yeah. uh, she'll make sure not to miss any comments. Patrick says, Gabe, I agree. Uh, Tim Sweeney is hoping crypto will get him in the sport, the space race with Elon and Jeff. 
I mean, Patrick, he doesn't need crypto. He already has more than enough money to be in that race if he, if he really wanted to. Um, Greg says, why do you think Valve made their decision? I have a theory on this. It's a really good question. What do you guys think? I don't, I mean, I don't know for sure. The thing that pops out to me because I'm in the background of regulation is just that they probably just don't want to deal with that right now. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Jimmy, do you have any better thoughts than that? <laughs> I, I, I think it's uncertainty and caution. You know, we've talked, especially on this subit where we're here in Vegas, we've talked to a lot of companies in this space uh, that are navigating and, and specifically retain their legal counsel because they're willing to take the task. They know the space and they're, they're willing to fight and they've had to let go of other counsel because it was this problem they didn't know about and didn't want to learn to solve. So I honestly, like I said, it's closed minded. It's, it shows a lack of, uh, innovation and a lack of a willingness to explore. So to Paul's point, they could come back and do it once they've had their time to do their due diligence or whatever it is they need to do. But I, I just think it was, um, I mean, if I was the, if I was the prophet and was really like punching all my comments, I'd say it's cowardice, but because that's not me, I'll, I'll just say <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, they're being very cautious. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to add some, you have to put this in some historical context. Valve has been horribly burned in the past with CSGO, for example, around, um, for example, a, a lot of a flood of Chinese gamers cheating and things like that. And Chinese lit, like games being distributed on the app, on the on Steam that are not legit, right? That scam people out of money that, um, and so I think there's like some historical context where they rightly or wrongly see it as their job to try and curate to some extent what is being offered. And maybe they think they feel that blockchain based games are still the wild west, rightly or wrongly. Right. And well, sorry. Go for it. And, and no, Jimmy, to your point, they could, their approach could have been maybe a bit more courageous and said, look, we'll accept five or 10 of the best that we feel are the best. I just think that that creates all kinds of other potential problems because then yeah. Steam becomes a kingmaker as opposed yeah. to sort of a, a third party in like, you know, platform that is not biased in any way. So, 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 back, so back to the Wild West comment, right? Like it is that. And when you're a company as big as Steam or Epic or any other game store, you rarely want to be the first to do something, right? You want to be a fast follow because you have a lot riding on whatever that decision is and it's a massive risk. So typically when you see massive innovation like that, it comes from a much smaller company and that is their claim to fame. It's their car or, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's their entry into the space and then they get acquired or they themselves go public or, or become this massive, you know, entity. So I, I, I hear what you're saying and I think, and maybe I'm being too critical of them, but, um, but I do think it, it has something to do with perhaps their size and their tolerance for risk because of what they stand to lose, where it's not worth the gamble. Um, I still credit Epic for getting into the space because they need a risk like that to pay off for them after all of the other troubles they've gone through. Look, this is That's... a bit of a rabbit hole. Can I also just yeah. say that I hate the word blockchain-based games? <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying, like, hey, I play a lot of loot box-based games. Like, it's just, it doesn't, like... Is it? It's a game, right? And if it's not a game, then it should not be on any store, Epic or Steam. And I think we lose sight of the fact that players, I think, fundamentally don't care what mechanisms are in the background of the game. If the game is good, they'll play it. If the game's not good, they won't. And the fact that the industry continues to push blockchain-based gaming as some separate thing is, is why I think short-term it will fail, right? Because... If they pushed it as gaming and the blockchain based stuff was just some feature in the background that makes it better in some way, the, the reception I think would be a lot smoother than it is today. Yeah, and I think that. Sorry, go ahead, Lindsay. Um, I, I definitely don't think you're wrong. I also feel like we're in an era where a lot of things 
I, I think it's good. I think that a lot it's good that a lot of things are being done and built and created on the blockchain. But obviously, culturally, we're just a little bit behind in understanding all of that um, as a as a mass as a whole. So yeah, throwing the word in there um, doesn't necessarily help the cause. Actually, it's um, time to catch up on some of these comments. Now yeah, yeah, let me let me get, catch up. Time. Gabe says, "Look at those fountains." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> told you, don't get distracted. Uh, Juan, he says. In my opinion, the best way to integrate the blockchain into the game is to get the visual asset from users and make an NFT. Profit sharing is definitely possible. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can integrate it. It's just fundamentally, I think, gamers don't care, right? It, it's it's either a fun game or it isn't. And and these things are features in my mind. They they are they're enablers of something that that either makes the game more fun, easier to play more profitable for the developer like it, it it's what is the benefit it's not like don't sell me on on the the uh you know aluminum engine and the, the materials used sell me on where the car is going to get me um and i think that yeah the whole that whole piece of the industry has lost sight of like selling the benefit as opposed to selling the buzzword um like you said it's, it's definitely the start to a much deeper rabbit hole but that's yeah. a great point. <laughs> um, Wade says, totally distracted by the fountain now. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> Patrick says, dang, I missed the fountains. Patrick, you have to wait just like two more minutes. Um, Patrick says, want he yes, and then use it across the games through the metaverse. Like I said, there are some benefits. as uh, They're just not communicated that way. Alex says, that's awesome. Congrats, Lindsay. You'll have an avid listener here. Uh, and Wade, congrats, Lindsay. Yeah. I'll listen for sure. I will communicate that to Lindsay, guys, I'm sure. Uh, she will watch the rest of this, um, but we are excited for it. It's going to be a great. Uh, Wani says, "Bigger you get, trying to be safer." Yeah, uh, the, Jimmy, I think that was the point you made. Patrick says, uh, "The games are grindy and trash. The only reason people are playing blockchain NFT right now is because they're hoping to hit the jackpot, not because they enjoy the game." That to me is a problem long term. Uh, if that's the truth, Patrick, I don't know from I you know trust your experience, but I. Um, I don't know firsthand. Uh, that that is the impression I get. Yeah. Wani says, "Did we discuss about the name change of Facebook?" Wani, we did. You'll have to watch have to uh, the yeah. VOD uh, after. Wani says, "Rumor on the street that it will be Faceverse." We we <laughs> we, we, did, we did solicit ideas from the chat, and that 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 one did come up. So we'll we'll have to maybe we'll have to take bets on uh, since we're in Vegas here what what the name ends up being. 